So Wolfgang Munchau is a co-founder of the Eurozone analyst website, Euro Intelligence. He joins me now live from Brussels. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. So obviously Europe's debt crisis, very much a focus uh, of markets this week ahead of this finance minister's meeting. What exactly are you watching for? Well, I'm watching for any progress on uh, negotiations on the bailout mechanism. Uh, they want to increase the size, make it more flexible. The latest I've heard that negotiations have stalled. They're not going anywhere. Uh, uh, some countries are blocking, uh, blocking certain aspects of proposals. Um, it, is, it is sort of bogged down in lots of technical details. You know, some countries don't want to raise the ceiling. Others are prepared to raise it, but only under certain conditions. And there is at the moment not a lot of pressure from financial markets on them. Because, because this has sort of waned, there's been some optimism more recently. And whenever that happens, the ministers become a little bit more relaxed about these things. And that's why, why negotiations are dragging out for more. We're not going to get much or not going to hear much from these meetings on the succession mm. to Jean-Claude Trichet. They're going to put this off for a while. But, but uh, the priority now is really to get get this deal together. The, the improvement in the EFSF or the changes in the EFSF, this is the bailout mechanism, and, uh, and the, what Angela Merkel calls the competitiveness pact. Uh, uh, that combination is sort of the priority and they have a deadline for March 24th, 25th. Do you expect that, uh, that pact to evolve much in these discussions? Well, it's going to be much more difficult now that Axel Weber has, uh, has resigned from the Bundesbank and has no longer a candidate for the ECB, because it would have given Angela Merkel a bit more flexibility. She could have said, OK, we have a German at the ECB. Mm. Politically, that would have made it easier for her. She's not going to come back with this statement, this trophy uh, of a German ECB president. So she needs to come back with something else. So she needs yeah. to come back with some substantive uh, uh, agreements. And it's very hard for her to get substantive agreements, given that a lot of people, a lot of other countries disagree with her very profoundly on so many of these issues. So what are we talking about? Uh, the battle for succession to the ECB leading, leading to uh, what serious divisions within the Eurozone? I think so. Uh, there, are, there are very strong differences of views. Um, um, Germany is very, very open. They're not saying we don't want, we want the Germans. It's, 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 it's at the moment they like, they like, basically like to put off the discussion mm. until, until after the agreement on the competitiveness pact. Uh, when that happens, uh, I would think my guess is that Mario Draghi is the strongest candidate of the various candidates mentioned. He has the broadest set of experience, both as a central banker but also as a man involved in global financial stability, um, his political experience, his financial market experience. So my guess would be that, that once we get through the competitiveness pact debate in March, the debate will focus on him. Uh, it will be much easier to agree on him by that time than to do so now. And can we expect him, or indeed whoever takes over the position from Jean-Claude Trichet, to become more or less hawkish? I can't, I'm sorry, I, I have a static in the, in the noise. What was the question? Sure, again? I mean, I was saying that whoever wins the battle for ECB succession, I mean, they're, they're facing crucial decision on when to raise interest rates. Is their position likely to become more or less hawkish post Trichet? Well, I would think, I, I think the, the question, the, the, one should never overestimate the role of the ECB presidents on the ECB's, you know, hawkishness on, or unhawkishness. The, the president is, is, is somebody who is, you know, he heads a very large committee of people who have different views. His view is basically to get a line together, to get them to agree. So the fact that, 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 that Draghi is hawkish or not hawkish doesn't really matter so much. I mean, we never really know what Trichet, whether, how Trichet falls on those, on this divide. The question will be, how strong will be the effect of oil price and commodity price increases beyond inflation? And secondly, how will the German wage round develop? Because the German wage round will determine some of the labor market pressures that the Eurozone faces in the next, in the next year. These are the two questions. And by, by the spring, by April, May, we know a lot more. My guess is they move earlier than later. That's only my guess. And it doesn't really depend on who's going to be the president. All right. Fascinating dynamics at work there. Wolfgang Munchau from Eurointelligence, come on the show again. Good to talk to you.